Rogers came to our territory. We had our own ways of honoring the Creator and His teachings. Everything we did, there was always prayers and ceremonies. When they came, the crown at the time said, you cannot settle in, my, in any area without coming to me and without getting consent from those Indians. Now we see treaties being made and acknowledgments. However, they said, we need to enter into treaties. These are international treaties we have with the Crown. We have our right to self-determination. We have our own natural laws that we follow. When we went into treaty, we did not do it in English. It was difficult to communicate across the many languages and cultural worldviews. When the English entered, they had one goal and one understanding. That was to access our territories that the Creator gave us. Our people used interpreters to explain when we entered into treaties. They had ceremony to help understand what people were saying in English. The people here told them they can access a portion of the land. And we did not surrender anything. But the way it was written, the newcomers interpreted this as surrendering and reported to the Indian Affairs government and the Crown. The Crown divided power across the provincial government and they never existed until they entered into treaty. Alberta was created in 1905 and we were entering treaties before that. They wanted our natural resources that we can retain portions of our own territories. The situation became reversed. The Indian was created to take all that away. 1930, they took away our provincial rights to meet their needs and their agenda, and they did all this without our consent. What does it mean to you? It started a treaty making and the first contact of consultation. The Crown made an obligation that we will always have a say to these things. But they always avoided our involvement. Their agenda became take the Indian out of China. And that what we passed all the way to the Crown through all these government middlemen. We became assimilated and it is speeding up. What are we going to do about this? Canada goes around the world talking about equality, but in their own lands, they avoid these responsibilities. Sometimes it seems they distract us with taking control over here, and while this thing goes on, there is something else going on at the same time. We have to understand that the treaties have cut things off with our relationship. Canada has interfered with many things we try to protect and stand up for. What we need to do is assert our right to self-determination. We have to remember we have the power here. Canada is just a party we share the land with and now. We have to remember they never taught the true history, what suffering they caused us banned us from speaking our languages and cultures, residential schools. These brutalities is what proved to us what their true intentions were. Because of these, we now see our children suffering today. Many of them are addicts, alcoholic, alcohol has in, in interfered with our, with our world. We know we can't change the past, but we can determine how we move forward. Our own laws and Canada only looks at written laws so we need to write things down and capture what we, we really need to say. We need these things to reflect our own unique customs and laws. Laws are subject to treaty and other Can you tell her I said no? What happens is they don't write it down. Don't tell we Jeanette I said no. But they just have a carry on? Yeah. We have to write it down because we know what really reflects what we need. What we want, what we already had this whole time. The language is key to our identities and I'm asking and encouraging people to learn their languages. The language will capture all those complex ideas, descriptions, English cannot capture these. Back then, a child used to be raised by the whole community. We all have a role to play in our children, regardless of tribe. 
We all need to be united and encourage each other. We as elders do not want our future generation to forget what was told back then and what is taught now. It is sad, for example, we have too many single parent homes and not enough jobs available for our men to take care of their families. We recognize the corruption of our systems because of these introduced influences. I want to see our men hunting and taking care of their families we know we need things now, such as education, right to health care, and all of these things we were promised in our treaties. And the treaties are always threatened to be demolished, but we cannot let them take those treaties from us. We need to hold Canada and the current Crown accountable to what they have promised us. They think they can give us some money for ERC to stay quiet and to cover our trauma. We need to encourage our leaderships to teach them that we have the power here, not these foreign leaders that rule Canada. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows, the rivers flow, we will always be here. And if they don't want us to be here, they want us to mix us into dominant society and delegate authority to them. We need to wake up, protect our future generations, so our people, language, culture, and identity can always be here. I know we can do it. Know your authority, and we can use it. Tell Canada no. How many young people are taught respect? Of their identity, elders, we have, we have always seen a lack of it now. Our people are very spiritual, and we see it slowly coming back but only enforce more on those who get caught by their families. But we need to teach each other without judgment. All of our people suffer discrimination and humans generally want control and power. And they do it as long as they can get paid. We need to assert ourselves in many aspects every day, in the politics, in the laws, on the land, in our relationship with the newcomers. I speak fluent Dene, I come from a history background, my ancestors never spoke the language, but we now, we speak the language. My grandfather was a hereditary chief in the future, our people need to be careful. The pencil was introduced, and that's when the language started to get lost. What is wrong with parents today? Make sure you raise their children to be parents, and we need to teach them how to do these things. But we as elders parent our grandchildren now. How do we keep surviving in our communities? We need to teach them this and that, but I really recognize that sometimes they can't handle the pressure, so they back out from learning. We know we can teach our history to way back through oral teachings with our languages, but the issue is using that pencil to write it down. That's where I'm afraid we will be going into circles our people had our own systems. A person didn't just become a chief or clan leader, they had to learn from a young age. They, cared, they earned their trust. It was handed to them when they were ready. Usually passed down when the chief before them had passed away. Now anybody can run for council, anybody can run for council now. Now we need to learn who can protect us. Our chief and council have a responsibility to all the current people to protect us and our rights as well. In my community, we have an elder council and we support our chief and council, but the system reflects the way that English want to understand it, and this is what we submit to. But we know we need to rely on our own way in our communities and then use these systems to present to them. This is why we need to raise all of our children equally, since any one of them can be leaders now. I need you to look it up. They take radioactive waste. We get affected in our community. It affected our water, our water systems. It makes us sick. I'm asking for people to reach out and learn. When we talk about treaty, we talk about land. But Canada, in all our doings, they poison our water. And most of us don't have safe drinking water, even us, we have oil water advisories. I want to say that Canada has no respect for us, 
They just give us promises and words to get rid of us. It's their constitution, it's their control, it's in their power to tell us to follow them. Residential school and what they did was they did everything to kill us. Our elders and leadership was always guided by the elders and today we can all see in our communities the leadership is getting younger and current leadership. We know how much they know about their history, language, and culture. Back then, elders used to say, be careful how much money you will take from the government. Money is always the trick to the government. Our leadership is always faced with that. When we, go in, we are going to step in and turn it down, we know we need it to develop our communities, but our people never needed it. We lived off the lands. Why do we need land management acts to protect our water? We need fishery and hunting rights from that too. The government gave us money to hold our school for 10 years. We don't know after 10 years if we had to send our children to provincial and public schools. I agree with parenting. I work in a school in junior high. Our kids are running the home. They disrespect their parents run their homes, and those teens have babies. Our children need help. We are all affected by opioids too. We have to bury our kids more because of addictions. Our people are dying and just as fast as they did back then in residential school. We need wellness solutions, and then these other things will fall in place. 10-year grant with no guarantee after the 10 years. That's a money scheme. Be careful, don't get fooled. Water rights, what the conditions also affect our animals too. I wanted to mention treaty. They also have to mention fishing rights for food. The next is the nation has ran up against provincial courts. We attended court for occupying certain lands. We went to court to appeal to speak our language in the court of law and our people, they explained it in our language. The court could not understand or interpret. They couldn't make a judgment because they did not know what was being translated. That is reconciliation. We need to assert our rights in our language, have everything written, so the courts can't take it apart like they do in English. We need to do it in syllabics because we know they can't understand it. We need to use this to fight them. Regina. Treaty says we can hunt and fish in all of our territories, but because of traditional land and government agreement, these things even stop us from enjoying our own traditional land claims where we can go practice that. So the rights of indigenous peoples is to acknowledge what has been presented, rejected, and amended, and what has been ignored. If you look at the standards and how it reflects our daily lives, we need to see that the government can keep making laws and legislations and doing whatever they want to do. We just need to learn how we can do it collectively and what happens if we do become municipalities. Tax our people? How can we keep surviving like that? Remember the intent of our treaties, our elders say, we need to work together, be united. We became very individualized we do things for recognition and not collectivity. We do things that best fits our own families, not the best for everyone anymore. How many of our nations can afford to pay taxes using our lands as collateral? Our peoples and our territories has their own territories, government leadership structures, etc. Their main purpose was to keep our identity, to protect us. That was the ancestors and creator's main goal, and to take care of our people and our land. There was a division of power between the crown and the gov provincial government and native people. There will always be our people here, our lands. The provinces were never given jurisdiction over us, but they were given access to territories to help get rid of us in a way. The doctrine of discovery, the crown went to the Pope, if there's people in these lands, the Pope said, if they aren't people, then they can't own land. We were just considered populations if we weren't Christian. Our relationship with Canada is just a government-to-government -government relationship 
The Crown Delegates Authority to Canada, the Government in general is represented to the Crown annually on how Canada treats to the natives. Because of their goal to gain access to our territories, they had to get rid of us. They outlawed everything and made us suffer so we couldn't do anything. Everything had to be approved by the Minister of Indian Affairs. We are sovereign nations and live side by side without interference. So they created residential schools to get rid of us. These schools, we were not allowed to learn who we are, speak our language, learn our cultures. There was a lot of abuse in all forms. Our people had to endure all of that. Even though we already had our own education and health systems in place, the benefits treaty was supposed to be included. Our people knew that they were coming with diseases that our people did not recognize or how to cure. We knew everything was going to change. They thought that we didn't. When our people endured all those sufferings, all that came out of residential schools, the hurt and pain was never treated properly. So they turned their addictions with no mental health or wellness available. We all had to have dry reserves too at the time. When our people came back from residential school, they got put in the care of non-Indigenous peoples who didn't care or who, who, who and what we were. They just raised as Christian and in foster care systems. So these children turned to alcohol and would rarely go to their communities because some of them don't know which one they came from. Many of our people are displaced and lost. We have responsibilities as parents. The father is the provider and the mother for the children. And we know that's the greatest gift we have in all our communities. They are the heart of family and community. We want to look for we want to look for a way to look for how they cannot control us and distract us. We don't want to be collateral to them. If we don't pay, the institutions will take them. They will give us money for the use of our lands, but money is tricky, and they want us to tax each other. One nation cannot tax another nation. Why should we pay taxes on our lands? They are living off of it and being prosperous. The, that hinders our rights to hunt fish in our own traditional territories, and they charge us to do this when the Creator let us do it for free. When our ancestors entered into treaty, they gave us five dollars. It was a greeting gift, not a payment compensation for use of our lands. Excuse me. <coughs> but they treated as villages. Treaty payment. <coughs> I've never read this much in one time. <laughs> Here we go again, second round, let's go. <laughs> Treaty payments wrote down the names. We didn't have English names. They named our peoples with English names even if we didn't have them. 1951 treaty cards. Those cards did not have a termination date. We didn't need ID or passport to travel, but now we need those to move across our own lands. We were nomadic without these things, but these newcomers tell us that we need these things. This was supposed to continue, but Canada never respected that. Then the status cards were introduced, and now they have expired dates. When they expire, we are not Indian. When the last person dies who was born before 1951, when they die, we will no longer have any treaty Indians. We will have only status Indians. Then it'll keep going, being consumed by Canada. 
how many people after that will be able to pay taxes, collateral, very scary, huh? Our chiefs, our people are responsible. Our leadership has to make sure we protect our lands, our children, our leaders for the future. We have a responsibility to teach each other, to encourage each other. All of us are subject to things regarding treaty and the protection of them and making our relationships and nations stronger to prove to Canada that they can only, they can't bully us any longer on our own lands. We are teaching our language because it will capture everything to transmit knowledge, values, and our cultures. That is key to our identity, but to how we can govern ourselves. We need to re-educate ourselves, make our own laws. It is hard to capture things in the English language. We need to cover all areas of jurisdiction. We have to take action, revive our identity. We have the authority. We can no longer submit to Canada and the Crown. Our treaty is true Canada law. If our people only knew their authority, we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have questions where money and support will come from. There won't be discrimination. There won't be so much of our kids in the jail systems and our people will have respect for themselves where they come from. We have to teach ourselves. We know Canada <coughs> won't teach us. The elders always said, be united, whatever tribe, be united. We fight for each other. No tribe is better than another. The stronger tribes need to help a tribe with less population. But if we are not treated, how are we able to achieve these things if we aren't treated? All indigenous peoples here are sovereign nations, whether you entered into treaty or not. If you did, then you negotiate your right to self-government. Why will you allow to wait for them to tell you how to govern yourself? Just go with building your identity as a nation, even if Canada tells you otherwise. Just learn your truth, your story, and then you can have reconciliation. In Creed. This word, some people don't know what it means, reconciliation and reconciliation. Reconciliation, if we were talking about it, we look at South Africa. The white people are on one side of the table and the black people are on the other side. The white people have to tell the black people what they did to them. That doesn't happen here. We have to force the white people to talk to us and admit what they did to us. We need to come to terms with certain things to move forward. I'm a believer in action. At the NRTA meetings, what we need to do is go to these places where they use that, will take out the resources and travel around the country. Let us go to the bridges, for example, 